Hey guys, Sam here. This reloading video is going to be all about seating depths. Okay, this video stems from an email I got from a guy the other day about what my thoughts were on the differences in seating depths and what my process was for going about finding the one that my barrel liked. Uh, this is going to be part of a series on reloading I'm putting together before my spring shooting season starts. I'm balancing it between uh, written online content and videos. If you're interested in reading any online content, make sure to check out penanalprecision.com. I just published an article about headspace, full length sizing, how to set up the cases, how to measure the cases. There's a lot of links in there to the tools I use and things like that. Uh, what I'll talk about today is uh, bullet design, uh, how to measure a bullet to see what the seating depth is, how to measure your chamber and your throat. I'll talk about uh, where I start for seating depth when I'm doing load development, and I'll tell you about where I end, which is sometimes the most important factor with seating depth changing. Uh, you know, sometimes a, a gun just or a barrel simply doesn't like a bullet, and it won't matter where you seat that bullet in relation to the land. So it's important to be able to figure that out uh, relatively quickly, so you don't waste your bullets, waste your barrel, waste your powder, waste your time. So uh, anyway, I'm working on a 260 Remington right now. This is a Savage LRP. I'm loading 130 grain Burger hybrids in it. This will be the last batch before I start testing some other uh, bullet styles in it. Uh, so. You know, this is going to be kind of interesting to see how it all plays out. So let's get started. Okay, reloading revolves around keeping a lot of notes, writing a lot of measurements down, uh, measuring stuff. Uh, you know, whether it be the size of a group or the velocity or the seating depth, you're going to want to keep those notes around so that uh, all of this stuff is repeatable. You don't want to come up with a, a killer load, go out and shoot it and say, yeah, that is just the one I want, and then lose the little piece of paper that you stuck in the ammo box. You want to have it written down somewhere so that when you come back to that rifle next spring or next summer or two years from now, you'll know what that load was. Not only that, but you're going to want to keep track of your throat wear in the rifle in case you have to chase it with your seating depth. Now, to measure bullets, I recommend that you get a digital caliper. They're easier than dial calipers. You can use either one, but I really like the digital ones. And on the end here, clamped onto the jaw, is a Sinclair comparator body with a bullet insert in it. We're working with uh, six five bullets here, so it has a two six insert. Hornady sells a whole set with the aluminum inserts in it. Uh, I prefer the stainless steel ones. I think they're a little more consistent, and you can buy them individually. So when we start measuring bullet uh, bearing surface lengths, uh, you just need two case or two comparator bodies and two inserts, and you can measure the bullets. So that's what I recommend: Sinclair comparator body and a bullet insert. Okay, now that we have our tools and our notebook to keep notes in, we're going to start taking some measurements. First thing we need to know is what is the maximum capacity for a cartridge length in my rifle and the magazine. Uh, two things to consider. Uh, the first one is going to be how you measure the rounds. So the first measurement we're going to take is a cartridge based ogive length measurement, which is the length from the head of the case to the point on the bullet where it first contacts the rifling. That's the one that we're going to adjust for our seating depth. Uh, the other one that we need to know is the cartridge overall length. So that's literally from the case head to the tip of the bullet. And that's the one we need to know as far as magazine capacity goes. Now when the manufacturers of rifles build these rifles, you would think that they would match the two up. It's not always the case. A lot of Remingtons and rifles like that have really long throats in the chamber and a relatively short magazine. So uh, to run them out of the magazine, at least the stock magazine, you might not be able to reach the lands. This Savage has a relatively long magazine for the max seating depth of the chamber. So I can run, I haven't found a bullet yet that I can't run to the lands and still seat in this magazine. Uh, it's just something to consider. And on a side note, I would recommend that all of your load development gets done out of the magazine if that's how you plan to shoot it. You'll start picking up uh, function issues uh, that you just don't want to have uh, happening with the bullet and the seating depth that you figured out shoots the best in your rifle. So if it's coming out of the magazine and jamming into the front of the chamber with a long VLD style bullet, you're going to want to figure out how to fix that before you get too vested in that load because you might have to change bullets. Uh, it's just something to think about. The okay, first thing I'm going to do with a new rifle or a fresh barrel on an old rifle is figure out what my max cartridge based ogive length can be. 
To do that, I'm going to use this overall length gauge. This is just an aluminum rod with a threaded end on it that lets me use a modified case to take the place of a round in the chamber. Uh, Hornady sells this now. This one's an older Stony Point model, but they work the same. It's threaded on this end. You have a, a case that's been drilled and tapped that lets you thread it onto the gauge to take the place of a cartridge case, basically. And once you have it in place, you take the bullet you want to use, you put it in the end of the case, and you can push the bullet in and out of the throat until it meets the rifling. Once you find out where that place is, you lock it down, and it has a flat here on the gauge that lets you put a, a caliper jaw right here, and then our comparator body will be out here measuring the bullet. You can buy these cases for just about any cartridge out there. Hornady sells them. I think the best way to come about a gauge if you have the means to do it is to fire a round in your chamber and then drill the end out and tap it for the gauge. Uh, it's pretty easy to do on a lathe if you have access to that. I've heard of guys doing it with a drill press. The tap is a 5 16 by 36 tap. It's pretty fine threads, but uh, once you're done, it fits like a glove. Okay, with our modified case now, the bolt out of the gun, magazine out of the gun, we're going to put the bullet that we want to use into the modified case. Now it's important if you make your own case, don't size the brass back. In other words, don't make the, you know, don't give it any neck tension. You want the neck to be blown out so that you can put a bullet in it like this and it'll, it'll move freely. So if you need to uh, put a little emery cloth in there or something to make sure that that bullet slides in and out of that neck easily, go ahead and do it. You want it to move very freely. So we're going to make sure that our bullet is way down in the case. We're going to insert it in place of the bolt and then just pretend like that's our loaded round. The only thing I'll say to make sure of is that the, the shoulder of your modified case is touching the shoulder of the chamber. Then I'm going to loosen this lock nut and I'm going to push the, the rod, the push rod in, until it pushes on the end of the bullet and makes contact with the rifling in the barrel. So you make sure that the shoulder's touching, you make sure that you have the contact that you want on the bullet, and then you lock the lock nut down. So then you're going to pull the gauge back out and chances are the bullet's going to stay in it. Sometimes if you just tilt the rifle back the bullet will fall out. Sometimes it takes a little tap. That one just fell out. But uh, the best way to take it out if it sticks is just put the butt on your bench or on the floor or something and just give it a little tap. Don't stick a cleaning rod down the end of your muzzle. Your gunsmith will not like that at all. Okay so now that is our max cartridge based ogive length and with this bullet at least our max cartridge overall length. Okay now we're going to measure this. This is going to be our our starting point with our brand new fresh barrel. So I'm going to turn the caliper on. Uh, this has the comparator body with the 2.6 insert in place. I'm going to zero it and I'm going to measure across the flat to the junction of the nose of the bullet and the bearing surface. And that's going to be my measurement right there. That's what I'm going to note in my notebook. Now it's important to note that this isn't an absolute number. This probably isn't exactly the number uh, that it would measure if you could measure right to the rifling and back to the back of the case head. Uh, you know the, the rifling has a different shape to it. It's got a different angle to it. Uh, this this uh, comparator body, the insert, is ground a certain way to touch that bullet in a certain place. So this is a relative number. We're not really worried about what the absolute number is. All we really want to know, we want to be able to use this number to adjust our dies to make this bullet move relative to that number. So if you call up your buddy and you say, boy my Savage LRP uh, measures out at 2.156 on a max cartridge base ogive length and he says well mine's a 2.165 it doesn't really matter all you're looking for is a relative number to work off of so we know that this is zero on seating depth the bullet is touching the lens alright a real common question is where to start out with your seating depth where do I like to start out with my seating depth I start at ten thousandths off the lens with every gun that I try uh, every bullet that I shoot through those guns I start at ten thousandths off the lens I don't think there are any set rules for a particular style of bullet as to where you should start off the lands. Uh, you know, there's a common misconception out there that VLD bullets need to be shoved in the lands or they need to be way off the lands. Uh, I've shot a lot of different weights, a lot of different caliber VLDs all across the spread 
of seating depth. So I just don't buy into that. I think your barrel's either going to shoot the bullet well or it's not going to shoot the bullet well. And uh, there's not a whole lot of tuning you can do. I will say this about tuning seating depths. If you're going to see a difference in accuracy, it's going to be a big change in seating depth. You're not going to get a huge leap in accuracy by moving the bullet one or two thousandths in any one direction. I think if you if you hear somebody say that they're getting a, a great big change in their accuracy that way, I would question their testing protocol. Uh, I've tried it, and <laughs> the barrels I've tried it in just kept shooting really well. It didn't matter how far off I went. And if I had a bullet that the gun wouldn't shoot, it didn't care if I went two thousandths, five thousandths, ten thousandths, twenty thousandths. It wouldn't shoot the, bar the bullet, so I just moved on. In the end, it comes down to results. Just go with the results that you get. Don't worry about what everybody else says that your seating depth should be. You'll know soon enough. Don't be afraid to abandon a bullet if it doesn't shoot well in your barrel. If you look up behind me here, you see a lot of different brands, a lot of different weights, because barrels like to shoot bullets a little bit differently. All that matters is right there on the target. If you can produce a set of groups like this out of any one seating depth, why would you keep messing with the seating depth? Stop right there and just start shooting the gun. Uh, it's been my experience that if you have a good barrel and you don't run it too hard, you should be able to shoot the same seating depth for the life of the barrel. I've had them go from 10 thousandths to the throat being burned out at 40 thousandths and still shot well. So uh, keep track of your throat, keep track of the seating depth, and just trust the results on target. All right, guys, that's about all I know about seating depth. Uh, it's not that complex of a, of a subject. All I can say is don't be afraid to abandon a bullet if it doesn't shoot well for you. Don't just keep throwing bullets down there and changing the seating depth a couple thousandths at a time. Uh, it's either going to shoot well for you or it's not. And as you can see, there are a lot of good choices and bullets out there to shoot. So uh, just because the 130 hybrids did so well for me over the last couple of years doesn't mean they're going to shoot well for me in the next barrel. They probably will because they've shot so well in so many different barrels, but uh, I wouldn't be afraid to try something else if they don't. I will give you a little tip. If you're having doubt about your barrel and you've tried a couple of bullets or maybe just one bullet and you can't get it to shoot and you're wondering, man, this barrel must be bad, try a Sierra Match King, one of the vanilla ones, not one of the high BC versions. If it doesn't shoot one of those very well, there's probably something wrong with your barrel. Uh, if you have any questions at all about any of this stuff or reloading in general, feel free to ask me. Send me an email. That's the best way to reach me. It's sam at panhandleprecision.com. Go over and check out the website. There's a whole bunch of articles over there, a lot of links to all these tools that I use, some reviews of some of these tools that I use, and there's going to be more stuff coming. So until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.